Fundamental accounting assumptions. Consistency. We all know the meaning of consistency. It means you work in a particular or a defined manner over a long period of time. Right? Now, let's just forget accounting for a minute and let me give you an example. We all have used a ruler or a scale as we call it. Right? And this is not looking like an exact ruler or a scale, but normally this is divided into various centimeters, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and depending on the size, it may go on until 12, 24, whatever it might be, or 30 for that matter. Now, there are two people, A and B. A is sitting, let's say for example in Delhi, B is sitting in Mumbai. They both want to measure certain piece of cloth. Okay? And we know that both these cloths are actually exactly equal. Now if B uses a ruler to measure the cloth and he gets 80 centimeter as the length, will A get anything different if both of these clothes are equal? No, this will also be equal to 80 centimeter. Why? Because let's say for example this 80 centimeter in this ruler is equal to the 80 centimeter in the ruler of B. The reason is that whatever might be the area you are living in, if you get a scale, it is consistent in terms of measuring things. The 2 centimeter of scale of A is going to be equal to 2 scale of centimeter of B. Now you must be wondering why am I giving you this example? Right? The reason is because of this principle that the difference between these two is consistent. You might be sitting wherever, you might be whosoever, but the results that you will get are going to be the same. And the underlying assumption is both these clots are equal. Okay? Similar is the case with the application of accounting practices. Now, there might be different accounting practices for given items and both of them may be correct. Let's say I'll give you an example which obviously you will study as you move on. Depreciation. Depreciation is basically nothing but the reduction in the value of an asset. So let's say you got a plant and machinery. Okay. Obviously in year one it is going to be new and it will perform much better. In year two the value will go down. So this reduction in the value is basically known as depreciation. Under the accounting laws you can charge depreciation on two manners. One is basically written down value method. or straight line method and you will learn about these two in detail subsequently okay so what the consistency assumption means is that the accounting practices followed let's say company a follows the written down value method of charging depreciation what the consistency assumption says is that if you charge depreciation according to first method in year one you should keep on charging depreciation according to the same method in year 2, year 3, year 4. You cannot switch over methods. Okay? Why? Because you know, this will make things comparable. So whenever a person is comparing the accounts for year 1 and year 2, if the accounting practices are same, the comparison becomes easier. Whereas, if you start changing these accounting practices on a year-to-year -year basis, then consistency is not there and therefore the person who is reading may not be able to get a correct picture. Now, the other thing which you need to note here is that these accounting practices can also be changed. Okay? You can't change them on a year-to-year -year basis depending on what requirements you have, but these can be changed. But whenever you change them, you need to give a disclosure and impact 
of such change in financial statement. Let me just give you a very small simple example here. Let's say you get a machinery for rupees 100. Okay? And the rate of depreciation is 10%. Rate of depreciation means that this 10% of this 100 will be lost or weared and tiered. So in year 1, basically let's say for example you charge, there are two methods. One is the WDB method, the other one is the SLM or straight line method. And let's say the machinery is expected to last for 10 years. When you charge depreciation under straight line method, what you will do is, you will divide the total price by number of years and whatever is the money or whatever is the amount you get, you charge that much of depreciation for each of these 10 years. So let's say under SLM you will charge 10 rupees each for each of these years as depreciation. Whereas in the WDV method what you do is, you charge depreciation on the actual cost in year 1 which is 10% of 100. Okay, but for year 2 what will you do? You will reduce the value of this depreciation from this machinery 100 minus 10, 90. Okay, and then charge 10% depreciation on this reduced value, written down value. Written down value is what? It's the actual cost minus depreciation already charged. So 10% of 90 will be 9. 90 minus 9 will give you 81. 10% of 81 will be 8.1. And accordingly, you keep on charging depreciation. Now, the reason of consistency is that if in one year you charge, let's say, 10, then in next year you charge 10, whereas actually you should have charged 9, or in the third year you charge this, the user may not be able to compare the financial statement because the accounting practices are different. And therefore, consistency assumption is very important. Right? With this, I, I will close this particular lecture. Okay? Now basically, if you like this video, you can hit the like button and you can also share with your friends and help us make an educated world. Thank you for your patience. Any comments and feedbacks are most welcome. You can write it back to us at info at iedubook.com.